Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it's good to be back at our normal time live streaming. Uh, welcome to the Living Rooms Pop-Up Art Studio Wednesday. It's so great to be here on Facebook live streaming with you. If you have an opportunity to watch, welcome, welcome. Please feel free to make art with us, to chat in the comments. This is basically a place where we come together as a community to connect and stay in touch with one another and to meet new friends and share our creative energy with one another. And as always, of course, with every live stream, I'm going to be asking, let me know if you can see me and hear me, because I know sometimes we have some technical issues out there, but if you can hear me, let me know. If you can see me, let me know. Say hi. Uh, of course, there are folks out there who may not want to join in the chat, and that's okay. You're welcome to just listen or watch, do whatever you need to do wherever you are at. You don't even need to make art if you don't want to. You can simply, I don't know, do what you need to do in your busy day. You can fold your laundry, you can do your homework, you can maybe listen in while you are at work, whatever works for you. Because this is a place for you. And this is a place, well, it's a place for me too, for that matter. This week is a really interesting week for the living room. Hello, Wendy, so great to see you. Um, it's been a busy time the last few weeks for the living room. For those who may be tuning in for the first time this week, uh, usually we do this every Wednesday at 2 p.m., but last week we had to push our time because I was working with a, a group at Durham College, which was amazing. Um, but it's whenever we start reintroducing that community in-person engagement work, uh, at least what well, I was going to say whenever, but as we begin to do that, there's all these new anxieties that come up, all these new little surprise things that come to the surface after, what, 18 months of social distancing and taking care of ourselves and making sure to take care of other people by keeping our distance. Now we're beginning to see people in person again in a more serious way. And it can be tough. It can be strange. It can be wonderful. Uh, but it does bring up quite a few issues for me anyways. Um, one of those is, of course, how to engage again in person. I'm really lucky the community that gathers with us here online, you're pretty familiar with what we do, and folks who join us uh, soon get a sense of whether this is the place for them or not, and how they might contribute, and the kind of the the conversations that they have an opportunity to engage with if they choose so. But when it comes to seeing people face to face again and reconnecting with people that maybe we haven't seen in a very, very long time or meeting new people out in the community who may not be familiar with who we are, I have a certain sense of anxiety about that. I feel like I'm at the beginning of learning how to communicate once again. And the whole concept of community engagement is, has been rearranged, adjusted, reorganized. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about that as one of the themes as I enter into today, to today. And if you're thinking about it too, please feel free to let me know. Of course, another theme that I'm playing with today um, is just knowing this week, tomorrow, for those of you who may be watching from outside of Canada, is uh, Canada's Day, uh, Indigenous Day of Truth and Reconciliation. It's the 30th of September. It's a new day, a new statutory holiday for all of us. I think, it, is it a statutory holiday? Some people will have it as a holiday, others will not. And it gives us an opportunity, especially settlers like myself, to reflect on how I can do a better job as an ally for Indigenous colleagues, friends, community members, what role I might be able to play in restoring justice, power, or creating opportunities for them to feel safe and in included, if they wish to be included. Um, in 2017, the National Network of Art Hive hosted a really interesting traveling art exhibit on that theme. They asked for settlers to enter into a process of humble inquiry. So that's another art hive term that I interpret as meaning a quiet reflection, an engaged study of something starting with myself and the knowledge that is already available, to look at myself and the unearned privilege I have 
in this country due to colonization. And to kind of start deconstructing that within myself. And there's a really excellent book called Unsettling the Settler Within. If anyone is interested in exploring more about that process, I totally recommend that. And you know what, at the end of the archive, I'll plop it into the show and tell as a resource for folks. Um, but that exhibit was 2017 and our community members came together to create work on what reconciliation meant to them and to discuss these, you know, everything that is, everything that we possibly could with regards to the calls to action and what we could do to contribute to positive change. I think of that exhibit today and perhaps I'm wondering how I might reflect on just myself, where I'm at in that process. And if you are interested or, you know what, I invite you to do the same if you'd like. And if you want to ask questions or talk about allyship or what we might do, just as ordinary human beings who are perfectly imperfect, who have so much more to learn, uh, feel free to ask them here. Again, I'm no expert, but we have enough resources out here in the community that we can learn more about how we can help one another move forward on that journey. But of course, there's much to celebrate as well um, and honor as we, we appreciate and approach this day. So there's a lot there, as you can see. There's a lot on my mind. <laughs> and I want you to be feel free to let me know what's on your mind too. That's how these work, that we can come together and share space with one another, even if it is only virtual space, to create and connect and have that creative dialogue about those things that matter to us and that impact our day to day and our future potentially. So yeah, without further ado, I think I might get making. And again, if you're out there and you're making something that you'd like to share with the community, please let us know. If you have any thoughts or questions, again, you're welcome to put them into the chat. But just another reminder that if you'd prefer to be quiet and reflect and work on whatever you're working on this afternoon, you're more than welcome to do that too. I will try to keep an eye on the chat. Sometimes if I get busy and involved in my project, I might miss things. So feel free to flag it or ask me again several times until I, until I respond. I'm only human after all. And sometimes me and technology, we don't always get along. <laughs> all right, let's get making. And let's figure out what, what it is that I'm gonna be making today. And maybe you can help me with that. So in the art hive, the morning art hive, we had this, when was it? This Tuesday, 10 a.m. now, we have new time for that. I painted this piece of paper, just a water watercolor piece. And obviously you can see that I have orange shirt day on the brain. I wasn't quite sure why I created it. That happens to me sometimes. I will just start making something, feeling really compelled to follow through with it, even though I don't know what it is that I'm making or why exactly I'm making it. Let me know if anyone else has that experience as well. But then once I was done, I thought, okay, I have this lovely big piece of cardstock. Let's see if I can make the most out of it. And one of the things that came to mind today was making a kind of, I started with the idea of making a homemade book. And then after that piece, I thought maybe not a book, maybe not a journal, maybe a kind of, well, for lack of a better term, I think uh, the only term that comes to my mind is shrine. Um, I don't necessarily mean it in a religious sense at all. More like a screen, something that you can, or that I can stand up and have on hand, almost like a decoration, maybe something that I do fold up and carry with me where I go, wherever I go. A talisman perhaps, something to remind me of something that's important to me. So I feel like that is a good place to begin. Let's see. 
And I'm going to be using the other materials I have at hand and perhaps weaving in some other art projects that I've been working on that have kind of been orphaned. Um, or things I've made that I love, but I don't know. I don't know how I'll use them, right? I'm a big fan of repurposing things and finding ways to integrate old art projects into new art projects. So that is what you might see me doing today. And as I go along as well, maybe I'll give you some updates about housekeeping, sort of living room stuff for folks who are interested in the creative writing group because tomorrow is a national day for Indigenous Truth and Reconciliation. We're not going to be holding our regular writers workshop. It will be back next Thursday, 10 a.m., same time, same place with Danielle. But for tomorrow, what we're going to be doing is sharing a few resources that folks in our community have found helpful in learning more about what's happening, why it's important to honor this day, to reflect on it. And again, simple things that every one of us can do to contribute, to learn and grow and contribute. I'm digging out the water pastels again. Water soluble crayons or pastels, however you like to call them, they're just such a fantastic tool. They allow me to do a few things all at once can kind of uh, get physical with them and manipulate them and move them around and scribble. And at the same time, I can also soften it out afterwards, move those colors around. So for the outside of this screen, it begins with me kind of just getting all the angst out, all the nerves, the stress, almost like a little warm up, a little art warm up. And then I can go in afterwards and soften things up. And as you see, I don't need, there's not much skill going on here. You don't need to know much about creating. Or even using these, these materials. Scribbling is one of my favorite things to do. And if you want to do a deep dive into the scribble world, let's see, a little bit of red there too. An interesting exercise you can try. Hey, Brandon. Brandon loving the scribbles as well. Is once you're finished the scribbles, set your piece down, have a look at it. Step away from it. See if you can see anything in it. In art therapy school, I think we used to call that the, the Winnicott scribble or the Winnicott doodle. <laughs> but really, it's something that we each one of us has been doing in one way or another since we were very little. We just, we don't always take time to examine it and see what's in there afterwards. All right, maybe, let's see. All right, now, oh, do I have, oh, where's my water? Where's my watercolor water? Where did that go? Aha, there it is. I was doing a little work. I'll take that out to the edges as well. So yes, tomorrow we're gonna to be sharing resources and highlighting the work that's being done out there in community by organizations, indigenous organizations in particular, to honor this day. And I hope people do have an opportunity to sit back and reflect and examine why this day is here. And Brandon's saying kind of looks like finding things in the clouds. A little bit, a little bit. And you know what, Brandon, that might be part of my day tomorrow too. I think I was reminded by everything that's happening out in Fairy Creek, out in BC, and just thinking again of indigenous land rights and sovereignty, of 
how important, like, how sacred nature is and how we need to take care of it and how sometimes the best place to go for healing is just outside. So maybe tomorrow I'll take some time to go outside and stare at the clouds, lay down on the ground, reflect on all that I have, all that I can do, to be gentle with myself as well, of course, but just to appreciate this beautiful world we have. Hey, Shelly, how you doing? I haven't taken enough time this year to stare at the clouds. That is, that is a fact. So some cloud staring time definitely on the cards. So now, let's see. Want that to dry, but don't want to have to use the hair dryer during a live stream. Let's see. Hmm. You know what I might do? Just leaning out of frame for just a moment. I think I'm going to use another piece of paper to blot this. And then I might get another interesting work of art out of it too. I'm wondering how many folks out there were familiar with the studio in 2017. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. A ghost of a print, a ghost print. I think some printers do call these that. I'm curious how many folks were around in 2017 when we had uh, those exhibits, the Traveling Art Hive exhibit on reconciliation. And the question we were asking everyone was, what does reconciliation mean to you? And approaching it specifically from like, you know, groups of settlers with other settlers using the resources that were available to really do our best to dig deep and examine these things and examine the role we play and can play in it. And we would, part of that process was creating art based on what we were discovering or learning about ourselves, commenting or communicating, or even just exploring these things through creative means, because sometimes there are no words to capture or encapsulate things that are that big. And once the artwork was created, what we did was we shipped it to the next art hive, the next city that was participating in the event. So in the end, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember where the artwork traveled on from here. I know we picked up artwork from the Art Hive in Belleville and the, that work came to us starting in Montreal. Hello, Jenny. Ah, thank you. Jenny's loving the ghost print. I suppose Halloween is also approaching, so ghost print, maybe that's an activity we can dig a little deeper into towards the end of October, playing with the theme. But yeah, the, we had this, it was an extraordinary event and really quite moving and starting, I think it started in Montreal and the artwork traveled from there to art hives all throughout the country, arriving to us. And then from us, we sent it on going west. And at each space it stopped, it would be displayed and we could have conversations about these things because they're intense things to have conversations about. And unless we make the time to have the conversations, sometimes they just don't happen. They don't happen on their own. We each have our own private thoughts and feelings and we don't have opportunities to critically examine where we're at, where we'd like to be, what we can do. There we go. Interesting. All right. Let's see where this goes now. But it was a powerful art exhibit. And I'm hoping that people have a chance. Yeah, I think it's online too. If people want to 
Let's see, what can I, what can I do with this? Oh, maybe. Maybe I can do something with that. So this is something that I made last week in the shortened live stream. Only had an hour. Came over from Durham College, all frazzled, uh, exhausted in a really good way from working with the students. And I created this piece from all the fragments. And again, last week was a, you know, that was a theme that was appropriate for me last week, being fragmented and a little bit all over the place. And I really loved how this piece turned out, but I don't know what to do with this piece. So I think right now what I'll do, I'll use it for this. So I'll use this as a guide to just mark out this heart where I want to cut it. There we go. Now let me see. I'll grab a pen. Come on, pen. There we go. Work with me. There we are. <laughs> and then I will cut this out. Cutting this heart into, but with good reason and for good reason. I'll just tear some of that tissue paper away. There we are. Of course, I know I've been talking about a lot of heavy stuff today. Let's for, like not forget though that there is a lot of joy. There's a lot of potential and possibility that comes from having these heavy discussions and digging deep on these themes. Every step that takes us in the right direction brings justice, brings freedom, right? But please don't let this stop you from talking about things that bring you joy that aren't connected either. We're allowed to, we're still allowed to talk about the things we're doing and making that are making us happy. So please feel free, share folks, share what you're working on. there's something that you're excited about that has bringing, been bringing you joy this week, let me know. Share it with the community. Oh, and Jenny's asking, how are the pieces of paper attached to the heart? Well, or attached, how, is there, how are the pieces of paper that make up the heart attached to the tissue paper? Just with a glue stick, nothing too fancy. That's a good glue brush, but it's not a good, ha there we go. And I like this, that it kind of dissolves and disappears. Let's move that over there. All right, then let's do that. The tissue paper was strong enough to hold those pieces but also nice and light and transparent enough that you could still have movement in the pieces. And it did make me think of some other exercises and things I'd like to do creatively with some old shears that I took down out of our front window. Any artists or art hive folks out there, you know how hard it is to get rid of things that are potential art supplies. When you're involved or in love with the world of repurposing things, that is something that happens. And so it is with those shears that I have. 
But now I think I'm going to try something similar to what I did last week with the tissue paper for this heart, but on fabric shears. I'm going to see what happens if I use some fabric glue and piece together paper mosaics on fabric that's transparent that I can play with. I'll keep you updated and posted about that. All right. And maybe I'm part of the show and tell today as well. Of course, posted after every live stream, please feel free to share what you're working on, share links to what you've got going on creatively. And if anything's sparked by the conversations we're having today, perhaps projects or things that you've been contemplating having to do with the theme of National Day of Truth and Reconciliation or allyship, feel free to share them there as well. I'll be posting links, but you know what, maybe if folks are interested, I can post some pictures of that art hive, that traveling art exhibit that we had in the studio space, but back in 2017. And of course, knowing that, you know, we did that once, I'm so excited because that means we can do something like that again, partnering with other art hives across the country to to speak to things that are important to us, to have artful conversations about things that maybe words alone can't really capture quite specifically. Oh, and Jenny's saying, I would like to hear about the bus. Can you tell me who's doing the conversion? Oh, Jenny, well, the conversion right now, uh, there have been several folks participating along the way in the journey. And we're very hopeful I was just writing the newsletter today with some updates. Hopefully, I know I say this every couple of months, but we're very hopeful that it should be available out in the community, at least to, you know, get used to driving it around and things like that and setting it up. It, we're hoping that we might be back to us in October, but the folks who are doing the conversion for us, um, the sort of helping us deconstruct the inside and building up the inside, putting in storage and things like that for us in a secure and safe way, those, that's the folks at PK, PK Conversions, PK Welding, that are an Oshawa-based company that have been around for a long time. And they don't usually do smaller projects or endeavors like ours, but they were really quite generous and agreed to take us on, some troublemaker artists. Uh, and we couldn't be more grateful to them for all their help and support along the way. And things are looking really good. That's the truth of it. It's better than what I could have imagined. And I'm just so excited to get it back and move on to the next stage, which is kind of personalizing it and making it feel a little more homey. And, you know, when the time comes, we may not be able to do it this season before the snow hits or the real cold hits. But uh, we're hoping that we can get it painted this year. and start making it look like a living room art bus. But yeah, if you're interested, that's who's doing it. That's who's helping us do it. Um, and of course, a lot of community have been offering to help as well. Everything from sewing curtains and cushions to uh, helping us like with donations. We've got a lot in storage right now, so we're going to see what we can distribute and get out to the community before taking on any new donations. Uh, but that's where it's at right now. That's where it's at right now. And we hope to be sharing some pictures with folks soon. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, uh, if you do, you'll be seeing, you'll get some sneak peek of pictures in there. And I'm excited to see it too, Brandon. <laughs> Every time we visit to see how it's going, um, it's closer, it's closer to being just, I mean, it's perfect already in my eyes. And I think that's part of that art hive principle as well of making do with what we have. Let's see, what do I have up here? I'm just digging around for some markers, folks. Anyone who ever visited the studio space at 149, uh, you know from seeing it that it wasn't exactly the most perfect of spaces. We took something and we made it colorful. We did our best to keep it accessible, uh, even to the extent of sometimes having to patch up cracks and holes in the tiles. <laughs> 
We definitely did not do a professional job on those. We simply filled things in with glitter and glue. The works? Works for a little while, right? So what's exciting about the mobile art studio is that what PK are doing is they're doing a really nice professional job. We'll know it's sturdy. We'll know it's safe. We'll know uh, that it's not going to fall apart and we're not going to have to hold anything up with duct tape <laughs> because they are really, really quite good at what they do. And Laura says about the studio space, it was perfectly imperfect. And that is, that's the truth. I think that's part of Art Hive life, recognizing that you can do so much with simple things. It doesn't need to be fancy. The conversion that we have right now, it's, you know, we don't have a lot of, we have enough money, but we don't, it's not going to be something spectacular. Uh, it's spectacular to us, but it's still going to look, it's still going to look like an old bus. It's going to be quirky and human. And that's, that was important for us to keep it accessible in a human way. Ah, <laughs> and Wabi Sabi is what Laura and Brown's saying. And Laura, can you remember, can you remind me what that means? I feel like that's a term I should know. Now I know I should wait until the glue is dry on the other side of this, but I just can't. So what I'm going to do instead is just start working on it and if things peel off, I'll repair it. Make do and mend as needed. I definitely think it was something that people appreciated about the space because it felt in its own way like you could be at home in it and you could make some mess in it and that it would be all right. When things are too perfect, you don't want to touch anything or mess anything up. You don't want to, it's hard to feel at home in spaces that are too perfect or too tidy or too, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Clinical, I suppose. But we shall see. We'll see how things go. We'll see how the community reacts. As I was saying at the very beginning of this video, I'm at a point right now where I have to really consider what community engagement means again, right? What does communication in the community look like? Hello, Ashley. Nice to see you, Ashley. Welcome. And there are some things that we can't, you know, I can't make some of the same assumptions I used to before. Um, even though I always tried to check them out. I think we'll need to be clearer and more communication, being able to communicate, even when we're having difficult or awkward conversations will be more important than ever. Of course, awkward conversations. I do enjoy a good awkward conversation. <laughs> And Laura's saying, just another question about Wabi Sabi. I learned about it in a book someone gave Emily, Finding Beauty in Imperfection, Simplicity. Lovely. And sterile. That's the word I was looking for, Brandon, just about what happens when a space is too, too clean or tidy. And even though the, the mobile art studio is, is going to be, hopefully, because of the nature of the vehicle and the drive, like we're driving it around, so it has to be safe, so it has to be tidier than a lot of things were at the studio. We're hoping that it'll still have character and we'll still be able to use it in a, like in a human scaled way. That is the hope. But again, yes, we'll have to be clean. We'll have to be, you know, just as far as, you know, the world we're living in right now, 
uh, the things that we'll ask and I will be sharing updates with everyone about this as the time comes and we're getting out there into community but you know we will be asking people to use hand sanitizer before they touch any of the art supplies we will be asking folks if the supplies they use uh, can be sanitized to put them in a bin so we can spray them leave them to sit so they can you know be cleaned after the way there might be some materials that we just have to set aside and leave overnight until we can repurpose them again it's a different kind of conversation a different way of engaging and that's okay I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been thinking about this and having to consider what engagement looks like now. The quality of our engagement, of course, that doesn't need to change. Just how we do things might. And Ashley saying, I remember saying that the first day I came to an Art Hive session about conversations. Oh, do you mean, are you um, in reference to difficult and awkward and the importance of being able to have awkward conversations? Yeah, I, I, maybe that's a wrong to say I like having awkward conversations is perhaps not the best <laughs> I, I tend to fall into a lot of conversations that become awkward and sometimes that's because I'm curious to know why people say the things they do or make the choices that they do particularly if those choices or the words they're saying are hurtful to other people intentionally or unintentionally and I feel it's important to let people know the impact of their choices, their behaviors, their actions, their words. And I expect the same from people who are working with me. I'm accountable too, right? And that's one of the ways I learn is when people point out that what I'm saying or doing or the way I'm saying or doing it might be hurtful to them. And I'm lucky enough to have a community and several folks, maybe even in this live stream, who've been courageous enough to message me or to connect with me somehow, either you know in person in the studio days or online virtually you know in the last 18 months to let me know when I've unintentionally hurt someone or helped helped in the worst possible helping way helped someone to feel excluded or marginalized because that's not what I want to do and I think most people don't want to do that but we don't always know we don't we don't know what we don't know that's the truth of it isn't it and Brandon's saying, lol, I have no doubt that it'll have character. Oh my goodness. The bus? Yes. <laughs> and Ashley's saying, yes, couldn't spell it. Oh, couldn't spell what? The awkward or the uncomfortable? I can't, or is it me that I couldn't spell it on the day? Folks who know me, I'm not a very good speller. I love writing. I love creating. But yeah, I can't, uh, spelling is not, it's not my strong point. Hmm. And on that theme of character too, I do feel that character comes from, sometimes it comes from those awkward conversations and learning those difficult things, uncomfortable things about ourselves, right? We become better people by, by challenging ourselves to be better people, by growing. And sometimes it takes those ruptures to make that happen. And no one, I think, no one wants to have an awkward conversation. It's not like we wake up in the morning and say, yeah, I want to feel uncomfortable today. <laughs> but I think once you know you can survive those conversations, either as the person who's curious and asking for clarification and wanting to learn more or the person who's receiving the feedback and having to adjust and recognize that something, oh, something I've been doing has been hurting someone. I think no one wants that. So of course, if we can learn how to human more effectively, why wouldn't we want to? That has always been my fallback that we want to human more effectively, that we, as individuals, we don't want to hurt anyone. And if we knew we were hurting someone, wouldn't we want to change? So we didn't hurt them anymore. 
And of course, there are folks out there who do want to cause pain. And those folks, as always, they don't really have a place at the Living Room Community Arts Studio because if they're not willing to have a conversation about it, if they're not willing to try better, do better, even if it's not, you know, even if it's awkward and imperfect, it's not the place for them. Not yet. Maybe one day they will be ready. And when they're ready, we'll be ready to have those conversations. Oh, <laughs> and Ashley is saying, no, no, I couldn't spell awkward. And Siri helped me now. <laughs> Isn't it funny? There are those words out there that I've spelled a hundred, I've written out a hundred million times and I still need to check how they're spelled. I still want to reverse my I's and E's. There are certain words that I'm just convinced. I'm like, how does that not have, I guess that's happened to everyone at certain one point or another, where you've looked and you said, how does that, like I've, I would swear that letter was supposed to be there and has always been there and it's just changed overnight. But no. <laughs> On average, I'm just a lazy speller. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> as far as creative humaning goes, I think, you know what, I can, I can live with knowing that I have to work on my spelling. So folks, if you're just tuning in now, for everyone who's joining us or maybe listening at home, maybe you started in the live stream a little uh, later. I'm working on a little screen here as I contemplate and revisit the themes of uh, the 2017 Touring Art Hive exhibit on what can reconciliation means to us, to you, to uh, white settlers doing their best to learn how to become better allies, to support and uplift indigenous causes, indigenous sovereignty, and there's so much to do and sometimes it can be overwhelming, but whatever and wherever you are at in your journey, as awkward or weird as it might feel, as you know, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it too, I think it's important to take a moment, take many moments, as many moments as you can to reflect on it and check in with yourself. And since that exhibit was in 2017, I'm taking a moment now to check in with myself and create some work that reflects upon that and invites me to think, where am I now? What do I still need to do? What do I want to do better? Uh, all of those things, right? It's an interesting and awkward and sometimes uncomfortable conversation, but it starts with each of us, each of us as individuals, where we are at and in our lives right now, when we do what we can with what we have. And Ashley is saying just again, see, we're talking about awkward humaning along with that and perfection and being imperfect and keeping things on a human scale as opposed to an industrial, sterile, you know, machine, like scale, uh, yeah, tied into all of that is this, this humaning piece, this creative humaning piece of doing what we can with what we have one day at a time, one moment at a time. And one of the things that I don't do very well is spell. And Ashley says, most creative people I know can't spell. And that's a great comfort. I'm not going to lie. And so here, the glue here is sticking a little too much. I have a hair dryer right beside me, by the way. It's one of the most underrated art tools you can find. But it's too loud for a live stream. I worry that it would be too loud. So I'll just work on the bits and pieces that I can and return to the outside later on when it dries. Yeah, imperfect, uncomfortable. Humaning isn't always easy. And it's okay if you have those days where you just can't. 
I think we, each one of us, no matter who we are, need to take those moments to say, we need to recognize when we have, you know, don't have the spoons, when we're not in a place where we can tackle certain things. Because burnout is for real, folks. And Ashley's saying, can I see the outside again, Mary? It looks amazing. Well, this, so the outside of this little screen that I'm creating, I think I'm like torn between calling it, it's not exactly a shrine, but it's something, there's gotta be a better word for it out there, folks. So if you can think of what that is, let me know. But this, you might remember from last week, so folks who are just tuning in recently, this was the heart that I made in last week's live stream when I came back from working with the fine arts community collaboration class at Durham College and only had an hour and was super flustered and fractured. I managed to gather, take pieces of things, to gather those pieces together to create something that to me felt cohesive and whole and was a way of kind of helping myself feel grounded again. Um, Art making often does that for me. It helps me make sense of things when I don't understand. Uh, even at the beginning of this live stream, I had no idea what I was going to make or why. And sometimes you just need to trust that if you start, you'll figure things out as you go along. And I think, well, that's, yeah, well, that, I mean, that speaks to a lot of things in life, doesn't it? If you never, if you never start, you'll never know. And even though it feels vulnerable to do it, we can figure it out. We can figure it out, but you just got to start sometimes. You got to take that first step. And it's not easy. And there are certainly days where I don't feel like taking that first step. So I, I don't mean to make it sound like I am some kind of, I don't know perfect making machine here. I think you know that already. <laughs> if you've ever watched any of these live streams, you know. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, maybe I even like to hide behind that and use that as an excuse for not doing more work on myself. And Ashley's saying, it reminds me of a heart that the pieces are all coming back together or a stained glass look. You're right. It's one of the reasons why I love working in mosaic, not necessarily ceramic mosaic, although I would love to do that, or stained glass. And I think I do have stained glass materials here somewhere. I love, I love artwork that does that, that assembles things, where you take pieces and you make something new with those pieces. And perhaps it is because of that metaphor, right? all the pieces coming back together, or perhaps taking the pieces from something in our life that didn't work out the way we wanted it to and metaphorically creating something newer, maybe better, more meaningful to us where we're at right now. And not feeling like we have to hold on to everything to return to something that was, because I think it's enormous, it's a gift in being able to make space for the new. And to shake things up, to reorganize things, to feel, what, to even feel a little nervous, right? Nervous from about the newness of something, the unknown. And again, art making is another great way to become familiar, to become familiar with that feeling, but also to familiar with the sense of persevering through that feeling. And I'm sure there are so many people that can relate to this out there. Um, hi, Nicole. And Brandon saying, I think that goes back to what you were saying about how you just know what you're doing is right. Trusting that you're able, ah, and to start and it will all come together. I, I hope so. I think so, right? But again, even even knowing that, and everyone can relate to this, even knowing that, I can tell myself that a hundred times a day, but I still feel, I still feel that nervousness and that, that, you know, the anxiety about what if it doesn't work out? What if I fail? What if it's horrible? And if it is and does happen to be in a phase where it is awkward, and ugly and uncomfortable. It's so, sometimes 
I want to drop it and I want to run away from it. And it's okay. I think it's okay sometimes to take those breaks and step back and get perspective and revisit it with fresh eyes or a fresh heart because all of these things do touch our hearts, don't they? So it's okay to take a break, but I do think we have something to learn from persevering through it and knowing that we will survive and that we can get through those periods of weirdness and those periods will carry us through to something even more precious and meaningful for ourselves. And Barb saying, hi, Barb. And Barb saying, no art today, babysitting my granddaughter and we are listening together, starting her art journey at a month old. Oh, fantastic. Well, what an honor. I'm so happy to be here and to, to know that she's with you and listening. Never too young to start an art journey, never too young. And I bet she could teach us a few things herself. <laughs> And Nicole's saying, I just had some coffee with my neighbor. It's so nice talking with someone new. So that's interesting. That touches upon some of the things I was, my concerns and anxieties about being out there in the world. And what does it look like? What does community engagement look like these days? Will I be brave enough to have those conversations? Will I be strong enough to lean into those awkward moments when I need to, to be a good ally, to be someone who can support the people that I work with who may not always be able to voice the things that I can with my privilege. Will I just be so happy to be with people that I'll forget everything? <laughs> that could happen too. Just being so happy to be out there Oh, maybe I'm not ready for that piece yet. Oh, no, maybe I am. But meeting new people in this interesting time. What a joy. What a privilege. And I'm glad that you're out there and making new friends. And when we have the mobile archive up and running, I'm really looking forward to doing that too. I think I have to talk back to that fear that I have that our differences will be greater than what we share in common and that through you know just being honest with one another that we can work through anything if someone is willing to learn and willing to grow and willing to have the conversation then we can work through it And if we look at art as a conversation we're having with ourselves, hmm, then that kind of holds true for all the other things we're talking about as well. Trusting, moving through the awkward, being able to love ourselves even when we're not, we're not performing in the way we hoped we would. I don't like using that word performing. It was the one word that came to mind. But I think we, we all have those moments and when it's just like, oh, this is awkward and uncomfortable and the words that came out of my mouth aren't really what I wanted to say. I'm not doing what I wanted to do or representing my best self in this moment. Maybe that's okay. If we can still love ourselves and promise to come back. And work towards whatever better looks like for us. And that's okay. I think that's okay. Yeah, awkward conversations. <laughs> I think everyone here has had one. I think I'm fair. It's fair for me to assume that, that everyone who's watching in the live stream or, or watching once it's archived, hello to you folks too that at some point or another, we've had an awkward conversation with someone, an awkward conversation about something that's important to us, maybe an awkward conversation in the defense of something we believe in or know to be true to ourselves.
They have the potential to be so rewarding, those awkward conversations. Mm. And again, as if we're working to be better allies to anyone who carries less privilege around in the world than we do, I think that's one of the things we might need to prepare ourselves to do. To become comfortable with the awkward. Comfortable with the uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's see. Slowly but surely, coming together. And let's see. Ashley says, no art here either. For No art making for you either. Surprising. Surprising, Ashley. Trying to take care of my tornado of an art space. <laughs> it looks like a tornado has hit. Well, you know what? Taking care of our creative spaces is important too. Just because I'm someone who likes to avoid that until the very last minute doesn't mean that you can't do it. I think the mobile art hive will be good for me because it'll force me to make time for that. Because it's important. It's important and it feels good. And Nicole saying, I, it was interesting. So this is the conversation that you had with a new neighbor. Uh, she's from India and said she misses how many colors people wear there. I'm assuming in India. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, to have that perspective to, it makes me wonder after talking with her, Nicole, did you look around and kind of realize, oh yeah, why aren't things more colorful here? I love learning about people's perspectives, what it's like to be them in the world. I think the more we can do that, the more we open ourselves to understanding what it's like to be someone else, the more our world expands, our worldview expands, and it becomes easier to do all this creative humaning stuff. And Jenny's saying, I remember when you started sessions with rules of engagement. I think we will have to perfect a new COVID related rules. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. And we still carry everything that we carried forward in those rules of engagement, the safe space policy or the accountability policy. It still applies. I think things that perhaps now are more important than ever, consent, right? Especially engaging in the mobile art hive, checking in with someone, uh, catching your, you know, seeking clarifications on any assumptions you might have. Assumptions aren't necessarily bad, but you only know if they're true and when you ask. Um, being able to anticipate other people's needs and especially keeping in mind the needs of those most vulnerable or most marginalized, right? Uh, I have no doubt that there will be some uncomfortable conversations. I have no doubt that, you know, that we go wherever we go with the mobile art hive, we're gonna be, at least until this pandemic has passed, we're gonna be wearing masks. We're going to be safe as we can be. We're going to be vaccinated. We're going to be adhering to public safety codes. And that is because we don't want to hurt anyone else. And sometimes with, you know, you may not always realize. There's going to be some interesting conversations, I'm sure. And with compassion, we're just going to have to explain that this is something that helps us know we're doing what we can to take care of folks in our community. And people, some people may not be ready for that, and that's okay too. But even revisiting those rules, it still makes sense. I think we hear them, we might hear them differently now. And if anyone's out there listening who hasn't heard our safe space policy, because I don't necessarily start every live stream with that safe space policy now, feel free to ask, and I will give you what we used to call the spiel. And I'm sure there are folks listening or watching right now that have heard the spiel so many times, uh, coming in and leaving the studio or sitting in the front door of what we used to be our studio, that you could probably recite it yourself. <laughs> And Ashley saying, I finished my mice. Oh, fantastic. So it's time to clean up now. That's the, yeah, the part of making art when you finish your project. 
And there's that moment of, oh, amazing, wonderful. And then a moment of, oh, look at what my space looks like. That's how I feel after almost every live stream here. <laughs> I create with abandon and make messes. Let's see. And Jenny's saying, yeah, band boundaries with personal space. Exactly. Yeah. So that just relates. And I'll come back to Nicole's comment in a second. You know, consent about, you know, even simple things of, you know, can I sit here? May I use that? Um, please, can you? And and advocating, learning how to advocate for ourselves most of, more effectively, modeling that for other folks who may not be as familiar with that. So that might be a situation of, can you please give me a little more space? Uh, when you stand that close to me, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Lots of things like that. And you know what, it'll be part of our job uh, the staff, the volunteers, our placement students, to keep an eye on that as well and step in when we need to. Because sometimes it's easier for us to take on those conversations rather than expecting all of our community members to on their own. That's one of the reasons why we pride ourselves on being able to step into the awkward. <laughs> we can model what it's like and it's not always pretty, but we survive. We survive. And Nicole was saying, I find it fascinating. This is about talking to your new neighbor who was from India, learning about her culture. She showed me wedding photos and it was so bright and colorful. The jewelry was amazing too. This sounds like you found a really exciting friend. It sounds like you've found someone who's excited to share what they know. Uh, to just, yeah, what a wonderful thing. What a doorway, a beautiful doorway to be opened up for you through this human being. It reminds me of the Human Library Project. Was that what it was called? I think so. Libraries would host different people and you could go into a library and look at who was available to talk to and basically choose someone to sit down with and have a conversation with about who they were, uh, what their life was like. Was that called the Human Library Project? If there's someone out there who knows, Correct me if I'm wrong. And we don't need to have a library for that, of course. If there's someone in our life who's open and willing enough to share that, and if we're some compassionate and sensitive enough to honor that the gift that they give us. And Nicole, I sense that you are someone who was honored for that experience. It's a really beautiful thing. And Ashley saying just about cleaning up your space. There's plasticine everywhere. Yeah, there's lots of little scraps of paper all around me, all over the floor right now. Tiny little pieces from all the paper projects I've been doing. I can relate a little bit. And Ashley just replying to Nicole, just... Uh, just appreciating the colorfulness within that culture. And it's, you know, it's something again to, I think it's also different when we know someone, when we have that personal relationship with someone, because again, we, I've never been to India. So this is something that I'm only basing on friends or folks who've let me into the world, their world as well. That's a really big place. And there's so many different cultures there, so many different experiences. And I love whenever my ideas of what a culture might be are busted, whenever those assumptions are, you know, checked. There's always opportunities to learn. Yeah. Lovely, lovely opportunities. And 
And I think we're really lucky for, you know, the world we live in now. There's so many ways to connect with other people, so many opportunities, like different kinds of opportunities to learn about what it's like to be someone else. To educate ourselves, to gain awareness about what's happening out there in the world. Because sometimes allyship can look a lot like being a friend. It can start there. Right? Let's find some more orange pieces. Oh, there we are. And let's see. And Nicole's saying, I'm getting my Christmas presents made little by little. That was a conversation we were having in the Art Hive, the Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday morning Art Hive as well. I guess a lot of folks will be making presents. I know I will be trying to make some presents this year, starting early, doing it a little by little, just like you, Nicole, so we don't get too overwhelmed at any one point. Oh. And Jenny on a comment again, a cultural comment about henna. You know, there's still so much we have to learn about henna. I think, again, this kind of taps into that interesting conversation of appreciation and appropriation. And I've been guilty of this myself at times, of loving something so much that I don't necessarily look into the cultural context of things and when it's used. I love, I love it too. I love, you know, researching body art from around the world and the different traditions and practices and such a rich, rich world to dive into, isn't it? Everything from tattoos to scarification to branding and henna, things like that also play a role. The different things we, you know, as humans decorate ourselves with to represent or signify periods of transition we go through or different ceremonies or cultural traditions. There's so much out there to learn. To learn and to appreciate. Yeah. Ashley saying, I would love, uh, oh no, I would ask what you are making, but it might ruin the surprise for someone, so I won't. Offer oh, to Nicole. Yeah, that's right. This is also the time for you to begin being very careful about talking about gifts. We don't want to ruin it for anyone. But I'm sure, using your discretion, folks, you can feel free to share on your own accord. All right, so these pieces coming together quite nicely. I'm going to give it a little trim and see where we're at. Has anyone else out there figured out what it is I'm making yet? What we can call this? I think it's kind of modeled on the idea of the shrine, something that is a portable shrine that you can take with you wherever you go but it's more than that it's not necessarily religious it's more of a contract with myself but things that I'd like to be mindful of and remind myself of just along that question that we posed near the beginning again for folks who might be tuning in recently hello and welcome uh, about what reconciliation means to me and it's a question I invite everyone to reflect on what truth and reconciliation mean to you especially for us settlers out there who carry a lot of unearned privilege, privilege with us through the world, just to reflect on where we're at right now, where we've been in the past and what we might be able to do to become better allies and to support one another as allies in uplifting or being of service or learning or witnessing, whatever it is we need to do. And sometimes, most times, what we need to do is simply listen to those who have lived experience, which is what I plan to be doing tomorrow on the 30th where the living room will also be sharing resources for folks on our page. Instead of having the creative writing group, we're gonna be taking a break from that and just having some gentle like resources put out there for folks uh, that you can use at your own discretion to learn more about why we have a day for truth and reconciliation and recognition of indige indigenous culture here. in this way. It's an important day and there are lots of events happening throughout the Durham region as well. Some virtual, 
some in-person. I know that Caria is having an in-person event in the afternoon that I think there are parts of it that everyone is welcome to go to. Others you might not have to register for. But there will be lots of opportunities to learn more, to listen, to learn, to honor our Indigenous community members and everything that this day means to them. And Jenny asking just about, we're talking about culture and the different ways we represent our culture and our belief through how we decorate our bodies, uh, whether it's through, uh, came through that from that conversation about henna, and you're asking about scarification. Yes, so scarification might be something, it's another something similar to, in the sense of its permanence, what happens when someone tattoos themselves. Um, but it can happen through basically impacting and affecting and changing the skin in some way. So, and it's, again, in many cultures around the world, you'll see this, um, different vari variations on this theme and for very different reasons in many cases, but it could be, um, in some cases, branding, you know, using heat to impact or alter the skin. Again, you know, this is something you can also, for contemporary people interested in these practices, there are individuals in, who, you know, certified and who can do this safely. So definitely, these are not things to take upon yourselves. The same as with tattooing. Please don't tattoo yourself. Uh, go to someone who can do it safely and manageably, who has the know-how and the skill to do it well. Um, in many cultures, you know, it's something that uh, has been important to people in different places in the world. Just affects the skin in different ways. It's hard to describe. It's easier to see through pictures and things like that. Just the different ways we take ownership of ourselves and find to communicate who we are in a permanent way. Not always need to be permanent. You don't always need to, it doesn't always need to be that way. I think henna is a perfect example of that. What do I need here? I think I need a little more purple. But human beings, again, it's another example of just how creative we are and throughout time, all the, the many, many ways we found to express ourselves. And of course, our bodies can be canvases as well. Of course, the scars, even scars that come, you know, unintentionally through accidents in our lives or through various things that have happened to us, they hold meaning and tell stories as well, don't they? The scars that we see as well as the scars that we don't see. And each one of us will have different relationships with those scars, depending on who we are and where we're at in our own journeys. All right. Reflecting on this process and not knowing how or if I have the words to even explain what I'm creating here, but I'm trusting the process and seeing where it takes me. And let's see, Ashley saying, I always love how you can take pieces of paper, fit them together, and they turn out amazing, Mary. Well, I can't, you know what? I'm just rolling with this. And I, again, invite anyone who's out there, if there's something about what I'm doing that you like, there's no reason why you can't do this too. I think, it's about playing, being in a playful space, at least where you can turn out, tune out or turn down that inner critic and just try something. I often don't know what I'm creating during these live streams or what, I don't have a sense of what I want them to look like in the end. And there are times where I create where I do know what I want to create and I have an idea of how I want it to turn out, but not always. And if there are folks out there who've never experimented with creating that way, creating 
for the heck of it, creating without a plan, just diving into something spontaneous and seeing where it takes you. I totally recommend it. It's a really interesting way of being like becoming familiar with who you are in that moment of time. Finding that love for yourself and whatever you create, the beauty that lies within it. And you learn, I always learn through every project that I make this way. Every imperfect project that I make teaches me a little bit more about who I am, where I'm at. And when I look at it afterwards and I take some time to journal about it or to reflect on the process, if I, I, always, I learn something more after the fact, after it's done as well. I don't know if anyone else out there journals about what they create or takes time to reflect or write about the process, but because of this and because of the theme, because of the question that I'm asking myself before I even begin to make, that's something that I feel is really important for myself to follow up that question. And I turn to my art and I will ask it. I will ask it what it what I need to know, what I need to learn from what I've created. It's just a conversation with yourself and with your own creative process that you're having through the art you've made. A checking in. Hmm. Okay. I think I do need something dark there. I mean, I can look at this right now and say there's something about this interior to this. What are we calling it? There needs to be a better word than shrine. This contract, again, I've been talking a lot about contracts in my art lately, but again, I'm not too comfortable with that word. I'm a little uncomfortable with that word, but that's okay. It is what it is for now. I'm seeing with these pieces a kind of fieriness, a kind of colorful fieriness that's emerging. And perhaps that's there for a reason. Fire can be a powerful force of change. Maybe it's influenced and shaped by conversations I've had with friends in the community about this very subject. The idea of transformation, of growth. The journeys we take with those themes. So for now, this is the piece I've created. Again, a work in progress. I know there's more I want to add, but it might be worthwhile to take some time with this. It's in a good place to rest. So let's take a little close up and see. Building upon the art that I worked on last week. Let's open it up. Maybe, again, taking a look at this. Maybe there's even space to cut out some holes, to create some paper, like a paper lace, a paper window effect in this. Because along with that idea of, you know, the pieces coming together, the fieriness of whatever's inside, whatever this represents exactly, this idea, this concept of transformation and growth through change. Maybe I also want the suggestion of transparency and being able to see through things to the other side of whatever journey that I'm on. Does that make sense? Maybe? Maybe? I don't know.
Yeah. If I was to write down words in here, if I would, perhaps that's also something that I will do. Take, write out some words, some things that I want to remember, words that help anchor me in this moment. What words might come to mind? I think hope is definitely there. I think, you know, the theme of this conversation today and my own feelings even entering into this live stream today about wanting to talk about the big things and not knowing how and knowing that there's so much in the world that needs to be done to make things better. Open up your heart, Jenny. That's another wonderful thing, exactly. And perhaps that's what this is. It is opening up the heart and maybe if there's a contract Jenny you're brilliant I think if it's that's what this is it's about for me at least and maybe for all of us in some way too I think we can relate the courage it takes to move forward into difficult or uncomfortable things that we know <sighs> once we're through or once as we move forward it will become easier to manage and easier to stand up for all of those things but it takes opening up your heart, which is very scary sometimes. Opening up your heart and digging through things to get through to that that place, that new place. Um, and that's, I think that's a piece of what this is. Thank you for helping witness that for me. I think that will be going into the writing that's on the inside of this or into my journal piece. And kindness, Ashley is saying, yes. The kindness I want to embody, of course, I think all of us do. The kind of knowledge we want to have kindness as knowledge and knowledge as kindness. I think there's also a piece in here about anger and rage and knowing what to do with that anger and rage so that it doesn't hurt people, so that it's used in a constructive and purposeful way. That idea of transformation through fire again. I want to come out of whatever changes I go through to become stronger and a better human and a better ally in the end not always easy um, and the anger and the rage I have at certain things injustices meanness just you know all the stuff it needs to be put to some good use instead of just eating me up inside and I don't think I'm alone in thinking of that yes open up your heart kindness there's a kind of courage and a vulnerability always we always come back to that theme as well I'm thinking of Simone out there yeah so there's a lot here thank you so much everyone for walking me through this and as we come to an end of today's live stream uh, at the end of every live stream I'm always so so grateful to the people who join me here, the people who watch afterwards once it's been archived and share comments here and on YouTube as well, where we upload all these live streams and artist chats as well. I have so much gratitude and appreciation for the community that comes here to support and witness one another and the work that we do. Whether that work is tidying up your creative space or talking with a new person, taking the time to learn about what it's like to be them, the work of taking care of those we love and being there for them and standing up for the rights of others that and making change with whatever privilege we carry through the world. There's so much that we can do and there's always more that we can learn. And I think, at least for right now, I think this is a period of learning and listening so that we can take all of these things we're feeling and make like learn how we can move forward and make positive change with them and support those who are who are really doing the, the hard work. It's not always easy, but as long as, you know, we start with ourselves, we've got somewhere to move on from. We'll always have somewhere to move on from if we start with ourselves. I mean, it's that piece about moving through the world with the lived experience we have. I'm not trying to take on or assume the roles that others play more effectively than we do, isn't it? Folks, thank you so much for hanging out and having these big conversations with me today. If you haven't had an opportunity to create on this theme, 
uh, this theme about what truth and reconciliation means to you, whoever you might be out there, as long as you are feeling safe enough to enter into that conversation with yourself through art, I invite you to do so. You never know what you might learn. And again, just so grateful to be a part of a community that's open to these kind of conversations. Thank you so, so much. Take care of yourselves out there and have a wonderful rest of the week. Have a peaceful and wholehearted day tomorrow as well for those of you honoring Indigenous Day of Truth and Reconciliation in our country. And yeah, until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. We'll be back next week with new programming, reorganized, moved around, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday next week. The Writer's Workshop will be back. For those of you who, are, who will miss it tomorrow, don't worry, it'll be back next Thursday with Danielle. And check out the other activities and programs we'll have too. Wellness group on Monday. On Tuesday we have well, a full day with the Morning Art Hive Zoom, moving on to the Artist Chat on Instagram, and we have an Art Sparks live stream every Tuesday night now where community members suggest a theme that the artist creates on with you and has a conversation about as they make. And then Wednesday is this, of course, our live stream. I'll be back again next Wednesday and Thursday, the writer's group. So there's just a mini update for you. Thank you so much for your patience and for being connected and remaining connected, even when it's uncomfortable or awkward to do so. I appreciate you. And I look forward to making art with you again real soon. Thanks, everyone. Take care. <laughs>